Closed captioning is brought to you by Dirt Tricks, your source for innovation. Well, as you just saw, we had a great time out there in the dry lake bed with those girls. It's always good to be back here in the shop where it's a little bit cooler. Well, in front of us on the stand here, we have the KLX 250. Now, I've had the chance to ride this several times, completely stock, and some of the issues that I was having troubles with, the front end was a little soft and it was lacking on power. But before we work on the power issue, you always want to make sure that you get the handling set up correctly. If you don't, you can have all the power in the world and you won't be able to put the power to the ground. So last week we had Drew Smith over at WER take a look at our suspension to revalve it, set it up for my body weight, and also install a WER steering damper. So we're going to go and check out WER Enduro products. While we do that, I'm going to go ahead and put the flex bars on here and get that taken care of. Have fun. We met with Drew Smith from WER. He was explaining to me that when a bike comes from the factory, the suspension and spring weight rating is preset to a generic setting. In order to get the best performance and handling possible, every bike's suspension needs to be adjusted to the specific rider's body weight, riding ability, and the type of terrain ridden. In order to properly set the suspension, we need to remember to grease the bearings and carefully set the suspension sag. You know, all the manufacturers have some, some basic parameters concerning the sag, of, and, and that has to do with setting the tension of the spring. If we have too much tension on the spring, there's going to be too much weight on the front forks, and, and therefore the, the bike will be too far into the stroke too much of the time, a little bit quicker steering. So, you know, typical for manufacturers to, um, um, to set the sag at about one-third of the total suspension travel and that's with the rider's full weight on it so um, you that's know we're going to go through that procedure and we're going to show you the proper way to do that we're going to measure up um, vertically from the um, uh, from the axle and then we just got to find a, a, a point here that we can that we can reference and that we can get back to so i'm going to use this little um looks like the helmet loop there the helmet loop and i'm gonna just going to put a little tick mark on there so that we can find it again and, and make note of our, um, our length, which is 590 millimeters. Once you get on the bike, I'm going to instruct you how I need you to, to uh, sit the bike so that we get a, a, uh, an appropriate measurement. So okay. go ahead and take that off that, that bike stand. Is it preferable to have the uh, same riding gear on that you normally would? That would be uh, the, the best case scenario, but I think for, for getting started at this point, we can, we can make do with that. All right. Okay, we want you to slide your torso all the way to the front of the seat, all the way forward, arms bent, and then if you look down and you could see the, the crossbar and the top triple clamp, that'll put you in the right position. Okay. We also want there. both feet on the ground, just enough weight on your feet to balance the bike. So just stick with that right there. So basically as much as your body weight on the right. bike as possible. Right, in this way, you know, you can see that, that, that his body weight is distributed pretty well equally between the front and the rear. You know, it's important to be able to shift forward and, and, and not have the, the uh, uh, geometry change too much. So when we set it, we want to set it with, with you pretty much in the middle of the bike, and that's a pretty much of a standard turn entry position. Okay, I'm going to take my second measurement, and we got... Uh, 500 millimeters so uh, it's a difference of 90 millimeters so we there. got 90 millimeters and, and that typically with about 12 inches of travel we want about four inches of sag this bike may have slightly less than than four inches of sag but I think that what we need to do now is to go ahead and loosen that spring up and I think that for our starting point we want to start with about a hundred millimeters that's pretty much standard stuff Okay, perfect, 490, exactly 100 millimeters of tension. All right. So we just want to get it down firmly. Compression adjustment is on the shock reservoir. The rebound adjustment is at the bottom by the clevis. And the front fork compression adjustment is at the bottom of the front fork tubes. All right, Drew, I see here on the sheet that you provide with every customer that sends their suspension into you. Um, clicker settings. Now it, in this one it says 4 to 10 out. What exactly does that mean? 
we, we, we're going to turn the compression adjuster all the way to maximum, clockwise until it stops. Clockwise, okay. And then there's an internal ball detent that you can see in here. One, two, three, four. Turn the adjuster all the way clockwise. So in this case, we're recommending from six to 12 out for sand and hoop de doo So we're going to turn it one, two, three, four, five, six clicks. Counterclockwise. You, you can actually hear the clicks yes. and feel them too. All right, well, thanks, Drew, for setting up the suspension for us. I'm just finishing up installing a fresh set of grips on our bars here. We've got the uh, flex handlebars here we've just installed. Now, these flex handlebars that we just installed are a great little unit for absorbing impacts, reducing the amount of vibration coming through the bike into your arms. But also there's a safety factor involved here. Oftentimes if you land hard off of jump, your wrists, your arms, uh, your hands are going to be the ones that um, absorbs the impact. But with these bars, it takes that completely away. There are rubber elastomers down in here that are uh, interchangeable. You can choose which level of flexion that you want. We're going to take this one step farther here. In addition to the flex handlebars, we're going to add a Boysen shock out. What this is, is basically the same kind of setup as on your throttle side, but it goes onto your left hand side here. And what this does, inside the unit here are rubber cushions that allows the grip to flex while you're riding. So it'll reduce fatigue, it'll keep your fingers or hands from getting blistered, arm pumps a big thing, and also it'll help reduce the carpal tunnel syndrome or any injuries that might occur while you're riding. While I finish screwing this in here, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll be talking tires.